Good morning. Uh, so continue with uh, Snippet Pixie um, rewrite in Golang this uh, today. Um, so as we left it last week, um, the last time last week for me, um, I was struggling to test uh, failure conditions um, uh, when processing flags and things. So at the moment, um, when we initialize the CLI, um, we pass in standard out. Um, that's one of the inputs to the function. And so all output goes to standard out um, from there. So the flags set to output there. Um, and we also write anything else out to um, out there, but we also have the failure condition um, and we're writing directly to standard error in that case. Um, so, we need to find a way of catching that output so that we can test to make sure that when we pass in incorrect flags to the app, it writes it out to standard error. Um, and that's where I'm at at the moment. So if I run the test, it fails um, because you see all this error. Uh, the usage is going to standard error, not getting caught. Um, and then of course, when we say, hey, is the length of the output greater than zero? It's not because we're not catching it. Um, so we need to find a different way. Um, and I did a quick little look at the end of the last session. I think I can redirect to a file like that. So I need to look up that again. Uh, now I've got to try and remember where that was. Um, probably... Uh, what package are we looking at now? Syscall standard... Oh, I guess it's OS standard error. Let's try it. I can't remember where it was now. It must have been in OS. Uh, let's see if I can find that bit again. I'll just go for that. Because that might give me some other bits and bobs to look at. Right, okay, that's the bit I was looking at. And that is the match, one and only. Okay, so errors returned from this package may be tested against these errors with errors is. Standard in, standard out, and standard out are open files pointing to the standard input, standard output, and standard error file descriptors. Note that the Go runtime writes to standard error for panics and crashes. Closing standard error may, may cause those messages to go elsewhere, perhaps to a file opened later. Okay, so errors returned from this package. 
Okay, that's different, isn't it? Right, okay, so what that means is I need Right, so this is what's happening inside the package. What I need to do is find a way of reading the standard error into a buffer, I guess. Just like we're kind of doing by saying output should just go to a buffer. Um, so so we've got standard out. What I need is a standard -er. It's variable size, but for the bytes, right? Okay. Reader. Hmm, okay. Is there, in that case, is there a way to read? Okay, quick search time. Uh, going read standard -er into buffer. That's not going to work. Oh, that's kind of what I want to do there. Got just standard out of a function. That's similar. Read a file into a variable. 
That might be useful. Okay. But, okay. So the question here. Because I'll go. I'm executing bash commands on my Golang application and standard and state go direct to console. But I'd like standard out and standard out to be returned as string variables from the run bash command account, blah, 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 without printing them to the console immediately. How to implement this? What they're trying to do there. Standard a string. Hmm, slightly different, but it's a look. Okay. buff so where's the out buff okay this is slightly different to what I want but Mm, no, see, that's different, isn't it? Yeah, it's not quite... I'm doing this, just stand it out. Oh, interesting. Making a channel. You too.
Interesting. Okay. So. The OS pipe doesn't sound quite right. So is there a version of that that does ever? Turns a connected pair of files. Reads from return from R, return bytes written to R. It returns the files and do. Oh, okay. Then you have to kind of Oh, okay, that's clever. Oh, okay. So I get it. So what I could do is, so that's going to be a pointer. So I can change that to a pointer to standard error. Um, basically keep a um, record of it. Then set up OS pipe, which is connects R and W. So whatever gets written to W can be read from R. And then I can hook up standard error as the pointer we get for writing do the thing close it grab all the output into r and then restore standard errors pointer to what we called beforehand. Interesting. Okay, let's do that. So, stand out, we will keep as is. And out to expect to be empty. But what we need to do is we need to start catching standard error. So what we'll do yeah I don't like rescue standard out. Um we'll call that old standard error. And of course that's gonna to have to be standard error. We are gonna have let's change this to standard uh, reader uh, 
and we'll call this standard uh, writer. So just so we know what we're doing. Um, so that's going to Really care about the error there. Out. That's different now, so this is new. Let's call this um, just standard error. Eh? Oops. So we're going to read standard error reader. Actually, that's not good. Let's change that. A bit easier to understand. So it goes to the writer, I'm going to close the writer, standard error, we're going to read it all. And we're going to restore that. So that's all going to happen. One, two, three. So this standard error, and in theory, that's a string, isn't it? Bytes, slice. Yeah. Um, let's do this then. So what we'll do is we'll do Standard uh, out <laughs> equals standard uh, string. Why is that not working? Ah. Am I okay to use? Let's see what happens then. Slices. Slices of the bytes. Okay. So this is going to cause problems now. Yeah. I've got to convert that. So how do I do that? Strings. Strings, 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 strings. Oh, here we go. There's bytes there. And I'll just grab strings as well. So in bytes.
which is really basic stuff, isn't it? But there's a buffer. Ah, we don't have that. This might be the problem. I might need to. How did they grab it? What? String. Okay, just cast it. Uh, try that. So standard, standard uh, out. And then Right, so let's put some let's put some comments on this so I remember this next time I come back. Um Redirect standard air to a variable. Close. Read. Output. Sent to standard air. And restore. Standard uh, to normal operation. Seems simple. Okay, so that's what we're doing, right? So we're piping standard writer to standard output. Standard writer is going to be. Standard air. What happened there? How did that? I thought I'd done that. Right, yeah, so standard air writer is going to be the same pointer as standard air. Right, way around. Um, and then do the thing which hopefully catches standard air output. 
output into standard writer, which then goes into standard output. Uh, close off the writer, grab the output, restore standard error, start doing tests. Make sure error. I'm getting some fluctuation on the power. The lights are flickering. Um, and do the thing, write standard out in, th in theory. Um, is empty, standard out. Standard error output. Yeah, okay. I think that should work. He says confidently. Right, run the test. Pass. Ooh. That's good. Take that up to there. Okay. Make sure that still works. Okay, um, so that means that we're now testing the help flag correctly. And whether we have an empty command set. So um, here, so if we do go build minus so snippet pixie, if we do Snippet Pixie with nothing. We're getting standard error output. That should be a my should be a one, yep. If I do all right, let's make sure we're getting what we expect there. So If I redirect standard output to dev null, we'll still get the same. Um, and if I do dash dash ripple, which does not exist, unknown flag ripple, get the same output, get an error message. Okay, so let's put that in a test. Oops. We will do ripple. Run the test still passes. And um, what other kind of errors can we do? Um, if we just pass Wibble on its own. Does that do anything? That's passing. Good. Okay. So let's do, let's change that up a bit and also do an argument to Wibble. Which of course has got to be a wobble. So in theory that should still fail. Uh, sorry, test pass, but we're catching failures there. Yeah. Okay. Sorted. Okay. Let's uh, commit that. 
So the difference now is that we're outputting uh, usage uh, when the incorrect command flags have been set. Um, and Let me just take out that chunk. There you How do I just not do that line then? Interesting. Okay, what I'll do. So I'll just take it out for that. And then, so. Display usage. Let's say help. Message when invalid docs given to CLI. That'll do. Right. So, now on to the fun stuff. This is what we want to do now. So we want to be able to add snippets uh, via the CLI, which is a brand new thing. And I'm going to do it as a sub command which means setting things up in a little different way for the flags. Um, so, oh, that thing is annoying me now. I wonder if this bulb's going Hmm. Okay, so this will now fail because we do not have an add command. There you go, we've got output there. No options supplied. Okay, interesting. So, I guess that's what we would expect to see here. So, I did snippet pixie add, what am I doing? Positional.
Mm. Yeah. So if I do SP this and then snippet pixie. Huh. That's interesting. I wonder if that's the back tick that's causing that. No, yeah, because it's not not getting the output it expects. Hmm. That'll be fun to fix up later, but not bothering about that just now. Okay, um, so that's very much an edge case. Let's do this then. So we need to create an add subcommand um, to satisfy this. So we need to refactor the init so that we can have multiple flag sets. Um, So what are we going to do here? I think I think what we're going to do is kind of duplicate this. And then based on arg1, cool different versions of this, with this being the default that we fall through to this whole setup here. Otherwise, we'll have a different flag set created. Um, Kinda. I think we might pass that name in. We only need to do that once, really. And then... Yeah. Okay. So... What we're gonna do... I'm just wondering whether I need all of that, but I might as well just start with all of it first. So we'll call this um, it default flag set app name as a string and then the arcs Don't need that anymore. Uh, 
So it should go through, do the usual thing, setting up the command, potentially returning errors, or nil. So that's okay. Um, And then in here, I think we will take all of this out by the switch, which we're going to repurpose. So we get the app name, and then we're going to switch based on logs. One and if it's add, I can tape type tape type. Uh, right, so we do this, this, and whatever, and then down here default we'll return in it defaults name uh, books. and out Actually, I thought we don't really need a default. This is the default. So, yeah. And here, we will be calling Um, in it and snippet flag set, which we don't have yet. Command line args, okay. Yeah. So that should work. In it. Snippet and
see. Um, what we could do there. think is pass to one kernel. Actually, it's two. Two onwards? Yeah, because we don't need the first. Don't need zero and one. Zero is the app name. And we've just grabbed one. So we only need two onwards. So we're just passing the rest. So that means arguments zero and one are positionals that we expect. So Well, it's nothing to do with pings anymore. In fact, we don't need hmm. Do we need any of that? What's the best way to set up a positional flag set? Do we even need to do any of this stuff? Because we're not actually doing... Hmm, that's interesting. So the issue I have there is I want to use the standard error messages. Um, Do this.
I'm looking for is a way of um, doing positional only. Default set command line flag is controlled by top of the flag set type allows one to define independent sets of flags, such as to implement sub-commands in a command line interface. The methods of flag set are anaglos, 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 to the top level functions of the command line flag set. So what can I do here then? Can I that's not marks? Mm, okay, I need to be careful there. So that's something to remember. I need to pass in Need to pass in everything I want to pass in add onwards because that's going to get stripped when I do a pass. Assuming I even need to do that. Oh, hold on. Oh, you pass it in anyway. That's fine. Okay. So. Okay, so in that case I can I might keep that consistent actually, as is a sub command. Yeah. So I will keep it as um, passing in one there. Get rid of the app name. Where's default? Does the whole lot. Yeah. Do that for the moment. All right. So back to the thing.
Mm. Okay. I'm a little bit confused how I can do positional. Because it's talking about... What happens after you've passed them? Okay. just to get something I don't know if this is going to help Okay, so if it 
It knows the number of items remaining after flags have been passed. And I can use the non flag arguments. Argument turns in the argument is the first remaining argument after flanks have been processed. Hmm. Time. I might have to think about that. I think I think it might have to be a different setup for this because at the moment all I need is two positionals. The alternative is to always require, or I guess optionally have them. That might be handy. That's a good point. If if you want to be explicit about the arguments, you would want to say, okay, I don't want to do positional. I want to pass in abbreviation and body. So what we could do here um, is abbreviation Do that. And then we pass in, we can do abbreviation or R A. And then obviously the default is empty. And we don't have a no default. I 
we might be doing like update and stuff later, but for the moment, we can then do Switch that. So everything changes here though in the switch. I don't really have one. I think we'll have to do a little bit more stuff. So Let's do both abbreviation, abbreviation and body required. And then what we'll do here If the length of abbreviation equals zero or length of the body is equal to zero and we'll do this and then after passing We did do, yeah, changed. What we can do then is if Uh, the flags changed abbreviation and not flags changed 
Warte, ey. Do basically that again. I'll do the same again, the other way around. Actually, let's do... Yeah, no, we'll do the same. So, if... Not flat, not deviation, and body is done. Yep, so passing those, donk, donk. Which means that at this point, if they are both done, we can test the data. So we can go Abbreviation uh, is it strings dot trim and Abbreviation. And what's the cut set? I've used it somewhere. Have I not? Okay. Um, better go look that up then. What's the concept? Trim space. With all lead and try in white space removed. Okay, that's what I want. Trim space. And then we do another quick little test. I think, yeah. I plan abbreviation. Don't we go all that down here? going to be repeating this a bit actually. We have to uh, refactor that later. Right, so if the abbreviation is zero, length is zero, blah blah blah. Actually, no, we don't need to repeat that here. Okay, take all that out. What we can do is so if we haven't got either of them set, 
we can look at the positions now. Um, so Yeah. So if neither flag has been set, we must be dealing with only positionals. So we can do, uh, what we're going to do here, we need to test to make sure. That we're good. So if kind of want their non logs, don't we? Okay, want two. And then we can pick out the two of them individually. So we'll do if flags and arg is so not equal to two, we've got a problem. Out. And we're basically into this setup now. So it's flags, arg. Presumably zero. Yeah. And then one. And then we can do that's it. Then we're sorted, aren't we? So you can optionally do abbreviation or body as a flag to add. We set up that. The usage image is going to be wrong, but anyway. Um, so if an abbreviation has been set, but not a body, we've got a problem. If abbreviation has not been set, but body has, we've got a problem. 
if both have been set, take their values, trimmed. If neither have been set, make sure we've got two positional arguments left after passing. If we haven't, we've got a problem. If we have, take the first and second and trim them, stuff them in their array. Otherwise, have a look at them, make sure the lengths are non-zero. If they are zeroed out, we've got a problem. Um, if we get here, in theory, we're in good standing and we should to should be able to basically do something like that. So we should be able to do add snippet. An abbreviation and body. And then return nil. Because we've just set it on the config. Nil error. Now the usage. Pass an app name, options, okay, we need to change that, um, Do here, take that out. Don't have any options. Options will be defaulted to that. We've always got options at the moment, so that's okay. Um, otherwise, we can pass in something else. Yeah, so okay, now we've got to update all these things. Just use the defaults here. Add snippet flag sets different. Uh, so we will have a string here. Options equals um,
Nation. Body. I'm going to do this. Oh, that's, that's fine for the moment. Okay. All right. Let's build that and see what happens. So we shouldn't have any problem with that. Do what? <laughs> okay. That's not what I expected. What did I do wrong there? Ah. Uh. Okay. That is a problem there. So what's happening is I haven't got <laughs> haven't got args number one. So it's actually going bang. I presume that's got a error uh, message as such. Yeah, error status. So I need to do a little test there, don't I? Um, Is it size? Length, maybe? Can't remember now. I've done that before, I'm sure. Capacity, that's something else. Let's see what happens. If args dot lin, okay. Oh, interesting. It's greater than.
one. Yeah, that's fine. And then it's looking at the first arg to see whether it's just the word. If it's not, it falls through to the defaults. Okay, try that. That's what we expect. If I do Um, go build minus O because D. If I get the daemon up, I just do ping, get pong. If I do help. That. If I do add usage, simply pick the abbreviation body. That's not quite right. I need to add abbreviation body options. As a really body required, okay. But if I do add SP this and snip it, is this going to give me the same problem I had before? With it doing it here. Okay, let's try this instead then. Gonna have to sort that. Okay, that's promising. That is good. So if I take out that one, it works. Um, if I do Abbreviation. Let's try that again to do that. Both abbreviation and body flags are required. Body. Sorted. Take out abbreviation. Both abbreviation and body planks required. I think if supplied would probably be better there. Or if flags. Right, required if using flags. Let's do that. And that's fine there. Okay. Um, and the options. Although, hmm. 
Yeah, that's fine. We actually need to do it a different way, don't we? We need to do... I'll come back to that. I'm not... Um, so there's a different syntax you can use for... Okay. You can do like an or. So you can say, right, I need this and this. Or you can do this. Um, so it'll be that or options. Um, can't remember what syntax is yet. I'll be curlies. Yeah. But anyway, um, we'll leave it simple at the moment. So that's actually okay. Uh, but we need to test that. So... That's the main test there. So that should, in theory, now work. It does. And it failed before. Um, this should still work. And then we should be able to do um let's take this. So this should fail. We do add as should SP on its own. I should abbreviation. Well, how was I doing the test on that? Let's do well we know this is a good way of doing things, so we'll do that. So that should fail. As should its short form. Oops. Let's keep it all. That should fail as well. something if I do too many positionals that should also fail
because that's now three. We're not expecting that. Okay. So they should all fail now. Well, they passed the test because they've had the conditions. And they should all end up with the usage message on standard error. And then here we need to test the flags. So we need deviation equals we could do the raw there. Let's see what that does. And body. That'll be interesting. And then here. Let's try it with quotes. And then again, that, and that. Oh, we need to take them out. Okay. So that's the short form as well. Should in theory work with a raw assignment there. That. Just the shell's going to go a bit loopy on that. But that's a shell issue. Okay. Let's see if that works. Um, hold on. <laughs> I don't need to go in there. Let's run the test. Ooh, fail there. SP dash SP. Oh, interesting. Because I've already got it in quotes, it's already a string. Yeah, because I'm doing, I'm not, I shouldn't be doing that because that shell interprets that. I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, shouldn't be doing that. So normal war should be fine. Run the test. Yeah, okay, that's cool. And can I just run them here? Um, Test minus V. They will pass. Good. Okay. So that means we're getting to the point of having an add snippet. Command. With those two arcs set up. At some point, we need to do something with that. So, in the run, oh, we haven't got an ad snippet yet, have we? In the debus. No, I've got a ping. Okay, but I really need to get on.
with my day. I haven't got a stand up today, but I do need to get on the stuff before uh, and that's going to take a little bit of time. But yeah, okay, so that's good. Um, so we've got these commands being passed now. Uh, we just need to get to the point of actually using it. We've got the add set up. Um, so let's say um, in here, to do add stand snippet and then in main Add snippet. Now I know what I've got to do tomorrow. Cool. All right. Um, that's me for today. Um, and then uh, tomorrow I will actually implement the actual. I keep on saying actual, I think. Um, and snippet uh, function uh, and see how that goes. I think there might be some more tests to add there because I'm not going to be dealing with the actual results of that and I need to do that and I need to keep saying actual a lot um, actually. Um, so anyway, until next time, uh, you take care.